Hello folks, hope you're having a great day today. Hey, today I'm going to take a look at another Carl Jacoby story. Today we're taking a look at The Aquarium. It's a horror short story that he published in 1962 for Arkham House Publishers. Um, and we're going to be taking a look at it. It's my, my publication of it. It's here in my collection on Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos. as put together by Robert Price um, from Del Rey. But it's been published in a lot of other places too. It's my favorite work that Carl Jacoby has done. Now, I, unlike some other pulp writers, I haven't... Um, I, I, this, this is the sequel to East of Samarinda. I'll, I'll link you to that below. Um, he published a number of stories that weren't in the horror genres when he was a writer for the Pulps, um, including uh, he actually created a sub-genre of adventure stories in the uh, Borneo setting. And they're, they're great and they're amazing. I just reviewed those for you. Um, I published that recently. I'll link you to it below. Feel free to take a look. Um, there's a big number of stories that are out there. And while they aren't horror, science fiction, or some fantasy, which this channel has, tries to focus in on, um, they are still some stories that I really love. And there's a lot of great a lot of great things in them. And he does a lot of great things with the setting. Um, and he actually corresponded with people during the setting because this was before the time when you could easily just watch some videos on it or just take a hike. You could be there tomorrow if you just jumped on a plane, right? Um, but before that had become... A common way of doing it. Um, so he corresponded with the people there, learned so much about the people, the culture, the, the local tribes, uh, the forts, and, and more from the soldiers that were in these forts. Um, and he used these details to invest his story with the realistic uh, details that he did not have because he never left, left the country. <laughs> he was just this Midwestern uh, writer. And I, I love him. I think he's great. I love that story too. So feel free to check it out. Uh, I'll link it to you below. Um, but The Aquarium is actually my favorite short story. But unfortunately, I've not been in like a Carl Jacoby mode recently. Like I've been pursuing other writers during this genre, like Melanie Wellman or um, C.L. Moore that wrote during the pulp era rather than chasing down Carl. Stuff. His stuff's good. I really like it, but I don't have... Uh, everything that I have by him, I've already read, and I haven't said, hey, let me go buy some more stuff of his. I like his stuff, um, but he, I haven't been in, in like a Carl Jacobi um, acquisition mode recently, so um, this will probably be the last story I do of him, at least for a while. Uh, but this is my favorite story of his I've read. I've read about 25 uh, to 30 of his short stories. Um, but we're going to take a look at the aquarium. Now, when he submitted the aquarium in 62, um, it was for Arkham House for August Durloff. Now, Arkist, Arkham House was basically originally created as a as a, as a publishing house to keep alive the works of H.P. Lovecraft for more generations. Um, but one of the things they did was is they kind of expanded themselves to other sort of contemporary writers of Lovecraft, like Clark Ashton Smith, who also, who also who was a big name writer during Weird Tales, who may have had some of his things forgotten by people starting in the late 50s or 60s. Um, so they start publishing Clark Ashton Smith's works as well as others uh, fr from that time and republishing them. And they also started publishing some new stuff. August Derleth was using this to publish his own Cthulhu Mythos stuff that were set in the mythos of, of, of Lovecraft um, and others too. Um, and, and Carl Jacoby was asked to turn in a short story. And he does. It's called The Aquarium. Now The Aquarium does have some Lovecraftian elements in it. Um, but they're not kind of the way that, that Derleth was pursuing the Lovecraft mythos. Derleth's it, version of the Lovecraft mythos wasn't as Lovecraftian as Lovecraft's. It was it, it was more of a Derleth mythos. He made some changes to it, had done some codification to it, um, and so he, I think that you know Carl Jacoby's aquarium's um, way of going uh, was was at odds with the way that Derleth saw the um, the Cthulhu mythos, and so those elements were actually removed from the story when it was published, um, and it was published without them. Um, and the, 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 the version that I have actually adds those back in. But I don't think you need it. I think the story is compelling. I think either one of them is great. Uh, I think that the one without the mythos elements, because it's a little bit of a faster read, I think it's actually probably the stronger story. Um, but I don't think it needed it, um, and, and it doesn't have very many of them in the one that has them either. So you can read whichever one you want, or both, and compare them, um, and see where you are. Um, but I'll just give you a quick synopsis of the aquarium, because I really want you to check it out, because it's really good. Um, and I'll link you to a couple of collections below. But basically what winds up happening in the aquarium is you have this lady um, who is a painter, and she is early, I think she, if I remember correctly, she's in her early 30s. Um, she's starting to get a little bit up there in age for ladies who would normally be married by this time or still living at home uh, with their parents. Um, but she is, uh, she's living the independent life. Um, so she picks up this, uh, she finds this lovely, lovely place um, that's recently been up for rent. Um, and she goes to check it out. And it says in it that there's an aquarium um, in it um, as a part of the, the ad. So she goes and checks it out. 
and uh, she loves the house. It's definitely what she was looking for. It's a house of character. It's one of those older houses. Uh, over, she, she lives in London, um, so she's getting this house over in, well, she lives in the London area. Um, she's moving over to, to London proper. Um, so she's moving over to this house. Um, she decides it's too much house. She invites one of her, her lady friends uh, to come over, who will come over and join her. And so the two of them will move into the house together. Um, and it's just this great, lo lo lovely house story, if you will, um, where they'll, they'll find more and more about the house. They'll start reading the library and the books in the library will have some interesting titles in them uh, which will take them down some interesting paths um, the aquarium will obviously have some weird things about it because that's why it's a horror story and then called the aquarium i don't need to tell you that's not a spoiler <laughs> uh, but you get the idea uh, and um so but the setting is great the characters are great our main character herself you know, because she's getting a little bit up there, but she's not like, you know, she's definitely an independent woman. Uh, she's a strong, independent woman who has a good sense of herself, which is, she doesn't fall into one of the two sort of uh, more normal archetypes for women during the pulp era. Although, to be fair, this is written in 62 after the pulp era is done with, where you'll typically have women that are either sort of the, the virginal, innocent, good girl who you, who will, you know, who's naive and needs to be protected and rescued. And then you'll have sort of the, the sexually open, but bad evil temptress who you need to stay away from um, those are kind of the two major archetypes of, of women in the pulp era and she's neither of those two which is interesting although I get 62 but you know it's it's by somebody who's writing during the pulp era and was big and weird tales and some other things so it's still interesting to see that your main character here does not follow either of those archetypes uh, which is pretty cool um, she's definitely just an independent strong woman um, and so, but anyway th there you are She's a lot of fun. Um, there's also some great scene building in here, um, particularly about the aquarium, the library, and that, that sort of study uh, where everything is. And I think that the, the stuff about the aquarium, and as you learn more and more about it, what the impact of it was, why it's in this house, who the person was previously who owned the house, set up the aquarium, and more. I think there's a lot of great world building that happens as a part of this short story. And unlike a lot of other short stories, I think that this one's a little longer, and I think, I think it's better for it because... I think you could probably have taken two or three pages out of this. But I don't think it would have been a strong story if you did it. I think that the the extra time that Carl Jacoby invests with those extra two or three pages that probably weren't necessary for the plot, but are just great scene building. Uh, he has such great, rich prose um, that really just, you know, you know drips off the page um, and into your mind as you're reading it and just kind of paints these little pictures in your mind as you're reading it and just such vivid imagination and such vivid writing. Um, and so I think that there's just an incredibly strong and compelling story here. And you can tell that Carl Jacoby has written for a while when he wrote the story. I mean, he's been writing for decades now. He's at the top of his craft. He's writing a tremendously strong short story. And again, this is my, short, my favorite short story that I've ever read by him. Um, and I haven't read all this stuff. But I've read, like I said, at least 20, 25, probably 25 or 30 of his short stories over the, over the course of my time. And this remains my favorite one of his short stories. It's also one of my favorite horror short stories, too. I probably, it's probably not one of my top 10, but it's probably one of my top 20 or to top 30. So I wanted to go ahead and leave it there for you. It's a great short story. I love it to death. Um, I've probably read it four times. Um, I could probably give you the synopsis in a lot more detail, but I want to um, instead give you an opportunity to kind of go into it with fresh eyes so you won't have a whole lot of the plot ruined for you. It's about 15 pages long. It's not that long. You know, if it takes you an hour to read it the first time, I'd be shocked. Um, but there you are. Um, that's a short story published by Arkham House in 62. So let me know what you thought about it. Um, I'll leave it there for you with, with the links below. Have you read it? I'm happy to engage with it more about some of the spoilers or the or the the latter half of the of the story, which I which I didn't even touch with at all. I'm happy to talk with you about it more in the comments below. Um, if you agree or disagree with my things, maybe you thought it was too long, uh, maybe you thought that the pacing was bad or the the details weren't needed. I'm I, you know, I'm happy to sort of engage you with that further, um, you know, and and let you know let me know what you thought about it. Happy to you know create a conversation about this topic. And hey, if you liked this video and this review. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button because there's going to be so many more of these to follow. I have you know, three of these videos coming out a week, um, and they usually do reviews of horror, science fiction, and fantasy stories, uh, My Three Passions, which is what this channel is kind of focused in on, laser focused. Um, and if you watch this video all the way to the end, hey, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day. We all have such busy days, such busy lives, and so many things out there that are pulling us in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me, that's very humbling, and I appreciate that. So thanks very much.